Hey everybody, it's Wendy with loveandstampin.com. Welcome. Today we are using the Banner Year Stamp Set, Menagerie Mix-Up, and Buffalo Check. Using lots of stamp sets. We've got our color splash colors, which are Seaside Spray, Pretty Peacock, uh, let me think, Pretty Peacock, Cinnamon Cider, and Bumblebee. I know this probably seems like a really weird color combination. Uh, when you first look at it, it's like, okay, those colors really don't go together. But they do, and they actually make really beautiful fall-inspired cards. And I'm hoping to actually get to play with these colors more than just this card, but I don't know if that'll happen or not. Life is busy, right? So anyway, we're going to start with the Menagerie Mix-Up set. And I'm gonna stamp out all of my little pieces for my beaver. Now, I used the wrong ears for this beaver. I should have used the little pointy ones. I didn't really, or actually there's little ones that are like rounded. Um, I'll be honest, I have not played with this before, so this was my first time, and I just tried to piece them together. Turns out that there's a whole guide um, on the Stampin' Up! website, and I went ahead and added that to my blog today. So if you're watching this and you want to see how all these different little pieces can go together and all the animals they can create, I would go over to my blog. The link is below the video and the photo is there so you'll be able to see it there and if this is not a bundle you already own i would highly recommend purchasing it because it is a forever stamp set and die set meaning you can have this in your collection literally literally till the end of time because it is going to be useful always. Um, it covers all seasons, all kinds of cute animals. There's tons of fun stuff you can do with it. I absolutely love this bundle. Um, okay, so here you're going to see me squeezing the ink pads together. That just pushes ink into the palette so that I can use them for stamping. Um, or I mean watercoloring, sorry. I'm using the Water Painters. These are the new brushes from Stampin' Up. I love these. They are much nicer than Aqua Painters. Um, I like, they. first of all, I like the way they fill in my hand better. Second of all, they hold more water. Third, they come with several different tips, which is something I did not like about the Aqua Painters that I had um, from Stampin' Up is that they only had certain brushes and these offer more options. So I would get them if I were you. Um, great to have in your collection if you need any sort of paint brush. The water is inside the pen, you squeeze it and the water comes down into the brush and then you can use it um, in your crafting. So here I'm imagining that the light is in the right top hand corner so that's why you're seeing shadows to the left. And in full disclosure, because I only believe in giving you full, honest information, um, the paper I'm using is Bristol Smooth Cardstock. Why would I not use Stampin' Up! Whisper White Cardstock? Because it doesn't take water well. It's not a watercolor paper. It's not meant to take water well. Um, so... I have a pack of Bristol paper for these such occurrences. I will link to it below the video. Um, you can purchase it on Amazon and I love it for any time I'm using anything that requires water. It moves really nicely, it doesn't peel, and it doesn't warp the paper. It is not actually watercolor paper, but it is made to take water, so everything moves on it much smoother. So anyway, if you want some of that paper to have on hand, I think I have had one pack of it for, I don't know, two years now, because I just don't do this as much as I would like. Uh, honestly, I lean towards using alcohol-based markers more than watercolor. Why? I don't know. I just do. So uh, as we color this guy and everything, we are going to have some story time. So at this point in the video, for those who are brand new to my channel, I don't just talk about my crafts. 
uh, following me is a little like following a vlogger that doesn't always show like pieces of their life, but talks about them. So if that's not your jam, that's totally okay. We can, you know, we can still say hello and goodbye. It's not a big deal. It doesn't hurt my feelings, but you should not subscribe to my channel if you don't like chit chat. Um, you should also probably just skip my videos because it's not going to be your jam and that's okay. There's lots of people on YouTube. I recently had somebody make a comment and every once in a while I talk about this. Recently somebody made a comment on one of my videos and said I talk too much and I responded to the person, you know what, that is the beauty of YouTube is that there's bazillions of channels out there that you can follow and they will be your perfect match. I am not that person for you. So um, I talk just enough for me. Thank you very much. So anyway, uh, on his little beaver tail there, you saw that I laid down the darker ink at the bottom and then I used the bumblebee at the top, which just gives him kind of a little glowing tail. And here we're going to use the pretty peacock in every other stripe and then the seaside spray on the opposite. Okay, let's chat. Shall we? We shall. Um, the other night I was thinking, well, okay, so first of all, current current life stuff. Let's see if we can get through that. Um, husband is on call this week, so that was, always gives us an interesting week. Um, we don't really know when he'll be home, if he'll be home. Basically, we pretend like he doesn't exist until he shows up. We make zero plans with him, and we just kind of roll with it. So Monday night, he got called. Wait a minute. See, my days run together. Anytime he's on call, my days run together because we don't sleep well in the house. It's kind of a, it's kind of chaotic. So he got called out Monday night, came home. Tuesday, he never came home. He came home, he got home at 5 a.m. Wednesday morning. And his poor eyes, so I live in California, for those of you who don't know that, and we are inundated with fires and smoke. So his eyes were so bloodshot and red from all the ash and smoke in the air. It is so bad, you guys. Um, lots and lots of people have lost their homes. It's just very heartbreaking. And I'm not going to talk about it too much because it's really sad and I'm really struggling to stay uh, healthy mentally right now. Because <laughs> between coronavirus pandemic stuff and the uh, fires here and smoke, I haven't seen the sun since like mid, well, probably the second week of August. Um, yeah. It's, it's starting to wear on me, y'all. Wear on me. So, um, and here I messed this up. So learn from me. I had to start a whole new one because you need to put adhesive on the back. So when you're using a background stamp, you want to make sure you put adhesive on the back and adhere it to your stamp apparatus because you can't use the magnetic bar, obviously, because it will mess it up. So I used a little bit of adhesive, put it on the back, and then I'm going to basically glue it down to the Stamparatus. The glue stays on the paper. It doesn't go to the Stamparatus. So this is like the perfect way to do this. And then you can stamp and restamp and restamp, and it's not a big deal. And I don't get good coverage with background stamps the first time. I always have to stamp them multiple times. It's never been any different for me. Um, so Stamparatus was a huge win for me because... Now I was able to stamp and restamp with uh, getting it perfect. Anyway, <clears throat> um, so back to what I was telling you. So that's been our week. It's been kind of crazy, and um, but we've just been working. Macy and I did go to Hobby Lobby the other day. I haven't been to Hobby Lobby in I don't even know how long. Um, we went because I needed to just get a few fall decorations because I need to do something that's like happy and cheerful. So I'm focusing in on cleaning my house really good and fall because I don't know. I don't know why. Just that it's got to, there's got to be something happy. So I got this really cute little bucket that says farm fresh pumpkins. And then I got, and I lied to you, see this, there is glue on the stamparatus, but it wiped right off. 
Um, and I got some fake little like flowery stuff. And then I got, uh, what else did I get? I feel like I didn't get that much. I really didn't get that much. I got a handful of things. I got a wooden pumpkin for my back porch. So I got some really cute decorations. Um, but yeah, I didn't get as many as I would have liked, to be honest with you. So anyway, um, that's it for current updates. So the other night I shared a thing on Facebook with my team, my team group, which we have so much fun in, by the way. Link below if you want to purchase the starter kit and be part of my team. That was a shameless plug. But anyway, um, so I shared this thing that is like, how many of these things have you done? And they were like country farm related. Things like sucked nectar from a flower, um, swam in a stock bucket or whatever, like the on the farm, dug for potatoes. There was like a bazillion things. I literally had done every single thing on the list except for one. And I was like, I am such a country bumpkin. But I have to tell you about these, a couple of these. So I didn't realize that, I assume, and this is what happens when you're only exposed to certain things, right? I assume everybody knew you could suck honey or nectar from a flower. So my grandpa, when we were growing up, my grandma and grandpa had this huge honeysuckle vine. It was in their front yard and it was enormous and it was always swarming with bees. And my grandpa would go out there with us and he would pluck the flowers off because we were afraid of the bees. And he taught us how to like pull the little stamen thing out of the middle. And then there would just be this little drop of nectar on the end that we could eat. Um, and we thought that was the coolest thing. We did that. I can, I have memories of doing that every single summer of my life as a child. Um, and then, <laughs> so this, I feel like this story is going to tell you a lot about my childhood. So some other fun summer stories. Um, cause I'm holding on to summer with all I've got. Uh, we had this pony. This was my cousin's pony. Her name was Ginger. This pony only went to the left, I think it was, because she was part of one of those like um, pony places where they go in circles on a track type thing. William Lamb Park is the name of the place. Anyways, so the pony didn't like to go any other direction except whatever direction. I can't remember if it was left or right, but it was one direction. And if you tried to make it go the other direction, it like threw his head around, occasionally gave a buck. There were lots of memories with Ginger, the pony. However, the one that stands out the most is if you have ever seen the movie Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken. Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken is an old movie. You can find it. Uh, Gabriel Anwar is in it. And it is the best movie ever. When we were kids, we would watch this movie over and over and over. You know when you're a kid how you like obsessively watch movies over and over. Anyways, it's about this girl who becomes a jumping, like the, at the circuses or the fairs, there were, they would like run these horses up this big tall track and then the horse would jump off into a um, big body of water below. And it was like, you know, death defined stunt, blah, blah, blah. And this was like in the thirties, right? So that's what the whole movie is about. She ends up, well, I'm not going to tell you in case you want to watch the movie. I'm not going to tell you all the details, but the bottom line is when she's training for how to do this, one of the things she does is she has this guy who runs the horse in a circle in an arena and she stands on a five gallon bucket and she tries to jump on the horse and pull herself on the horse as the horse is running by. Do you see where this is going? Are you afraid for me? I'm still alive. So don't be, but Anyway, as children, we had Ginger. Ginger was a light, grayish, white-ish pony. <laughs> I don't even know what color she was because she was just dirty all the time. Ginger was slightly foundered, so she had like the wobbly neck. And Ginger was kind of a wretch. Not even gonna lie. 
Ginger was not a nice person. Not all the time. And so we would put this halter and lead rope on this pony. We would get on a five gallon bucket. And yes, we would run the pon pony by us as we tried to jump on the pony and ride in circles on this pony. <laughs> now, please understand, we are children. Like nine, like I was probably nine, ten years old at the most, which meant my cousin Shannon who owned the pony was probably like, well, okay, so I might have been like 12. Maybe not quite 12. Anyway, 11, 12. She would have been like five, six years old. Her and I were the ringleaders of this situation, I believe. Um, and then my sister was like in between us age-wise. So basically you had four girls, me, my cousin Shannon, my cousin Amy, and my sister all under the age of like 11, 10, 11 years old, trying to harangue this pony and jump on her back as she ran by us off of a five gallon bucket. Mind you, there were no adults to be found. <laughs> this was my childhood. Like as long as we weren't bothering my grandma and grandpa, because we all were babysat by my grandparents. So Five of us, God love these people. There were five grandchildren. All five of us were watched by our grandparents most of our growing up life. Two of the two of us, two of the cousins, um, actually came along later because they lived further away and then they moved here. But the three main ones were me, my sister, and my cousin Shannon, who you hear me talk about a lot because she's more like a sister. I lived with her. Um, we all did. We all lived together. And so we had 40, my grandparents had 40 acres and this beautiful property for us to explore on and be kids on. And so essentially, if we were not bothering them, <laughs> they, were, they were happy. God love them. Like they were in their 50s by the time we came along, late 50s, early 60s, and they had raised four children. So here they now had in their golden years, all of us kids, I have to say, like my mom and my aunts did a huge disservice to them. I because they never took vacation. But honestly, I have to say, I don't think my grandparents would have wanted it any other way. I really believe they enjoyed it and loved it. And my grandpa was such a family man that I think it meant the world to him that he was so involved in our lives as kids. So anyway, that's the story of Ginger. Long live Ginger. She was a good little pony. She put up with a lot of stuff from us. And there's your finished card. Happy fall, y'all. I told you, I need fall. It, it needs to happen. And then this is the bumblebee background. And so I did make one card using that. And I am sharing that over on my blog. Link below the video. If you need any of these supplies, feel free to purchase them. Links are below the video for everything I used today. Watch another video from me here, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.